Hey, what's going on guys? I hope you all are doing well today. Elliot here and welcome back to the Fragrance Well. So for today's video topic, you see the thumbnail, you see the title, top 10 best smelling fragrances. All right, let's get the obvious or at least what should be obvious out of the way. Do I mean this literally? No, of course not. This is just to help the algorithm out, the almighty YouTube algorithm out a little bit, give it what it wants. But yes, these are 10 of the best smelling fragrances I have in my cabinet and I'm talking about just the smell. No other aspect of the experience of wearing a fragrance am I considering for this list. This is just the smell. Matter of fact, the uh, criteria I'm using is how did I feel when I first got my nose on these scents and does that feeling pretty much carry over into today? This is actually not a ranked list. It's actually not top 10. It's just 10 of the best smelling. I've got many others in my cabinet that I could have put on this list. But we're just gonna talk about 10 of them today. So before we get started, as always, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you do like the content, and please hit that bell icon and enable notifications so you can be notified when I upload new videos. Let's get into it. All right, kicking it off. First one's coming from the house of Mason Francis Kirkjohn. This is Amorous Ohm x de Parfum. Mason Francis Kirk John, Amorous Ohm x -Straight. So I've got receipts, I've talked about it before on this channel. This fragrance, when I first got my nose on it, I literally did a happy dance. No, I'm not gonna demonstrate it right now, but yeah, literally right there in the store. I smelled this and I was just like, this is amazing, this is awesome. Uh, and honestly, uh, when I get my nose on it, even today, just uh, I'm smelling it right now, that feeling comes back. Just on smell alone, this fragrance just makes me happy. It, so, there's something about it that it just works for me. It's sweet, it's fresh, features some notes like uh, cinnamon and saffron, so it's got a spicy element to it. Amorous kind of being the focal note in this fragrance. Amorous kind of smells somewhat fruity, balsamic, woody, so to speak. That's kind of the best way I can describe it. You do get that element of this once it dries down, but it's overwhelmingly fresh and sweet and quite spicy as well great really strong fragrance for the warmer months yeah and to this day i just thoroughly love the way this smells so once again from the house of mason francis kirk john this is amorous ohm x straight de parfum next up from the house of bdk parfums this is gris charnel x straight bdk parfums gris charnel x straight listen i'm not the only one who thinks this smells amazing because if you look at, I think Fragranica and if you look at a couple of other forums and look at one of the most popular like unisex niche fragrances, this one is right there at the top. And I still remember when I first got my nose on this at my local niche perfumery and I was absolutely blown away. Took me a while to get it because I was looking for this at a good deal. I finally did get it at a good deal somewhere. I don't even remember where, but yeah, this one here, it just smells insanely good. You've got the fig element there, but you've got supported spiciness with a lot of cardamom. You got some iris freshening it up, loads of tonka bean and vanilla in this, a little bit of a booziness just kind of hiding in the background there. The fragrance is so cozy and warming and inviting, and it just smells insanely good. If you haven't gotten your nose on this version of Gris Charnel, I highly suggest you do. As a matter of fact, if you've smelled the original Gris Charnel and thought it was just okay, I do think this is a vast improvement over the original. So once again, from the house of BDK Parfums, this is Gris Charnel x -Trait. All right, moving on. Next one's coming from the house of Am Watch. This is Interlude Man. Amwaj Interlude Man. So, very popular fragrance in the community, one of the most popular from the house, but not so much because it smells um, acceptable to most people. It's mostly just because it's a very unique scent that's very well done. Uh, but uh, yeah, this one here is a spicy, resinous, woody, leathery scent, very smoky, very incense-like vibe. In other words, this is one that is more so appreciated from enthusiasts more so than it would be the masses. Um, definitely, I know I wasn't gonna t talk about utility that much, but this one, the utility is relatively low. It's not a lot of places where I would say interlude is a optimal choice, but it doesn't matter to me. I've worn it in non-optimal situations and I absolutely love the way this smells. Matter of fact, 
This was, I can't remember if this was a blind buy. It might have been. I might have gotten my nose on it before. I just don't remember, to be honest. But I love the way this smells. It still captivates me. I just love notes like this. I love leathery notes. I love smoky notes. I love incense. I love resins. So because this is kind of a culmination of all of that rolled into one and done very, very well, I love the way this smells. And just on the smell alone, it's up there for me. So once again, from the house of Amwaj, this is Interlude Man. Next one's coming from the house of Roja Parfums. This is Isola Blue. Roja Parfums Isola Blue. Ah oh, man. If you like aromatic, slightly spicy citrus with a woodsy undertone, kind of a woodsy, maybe musky, ambergris undertone, this is one worth checking out. I love the way this smells. It is formerly known as Oligarch, so some of you might have the oligarch bottle but now it's repackaged as isola blue just fyi now this bottle is relatively new to my collection but i had a sample of it uh for months so the scent uh itself is not new and i just know when i smelled that sample i was immediately blown away and uh was just kind of looking for the right time to grab the fragrance and i got it now and let me just say the smell still captivates me it's a little hard saying this giving the fact that it's you know relatively new you know maybe over time that might change but all I know is as of right now, the smell of this just blows my mind. So I think it's worth being up on that list. And those that like it, maybe they agree with me. So once again, from the house of Roja Parfums, this is Isola Blue. All right, we got a couple from the house of Hermes. First up is going to be H24 Eau de Parfum. Hermes H24 Eau de Parfum. Now, I still remember when I first got my nose on H24 Eau de Toilette, I remember how unimpressed I was with it. So, you know, I pretty much just put that one off to the side, but I'm always interested to see if a, particularly with a concentration flanker, do they improve it? And I still remember when I was in a Nordstrom last year and I first got my nose on this and I was instantly blown away. Knew I was gonna have it at some point. I kind of slept on it for a while, but I got it now. And let me tell you that feeling that I had when I first smelled it then, up to now when I actually got the fragrance, still there and it's still here even though i've i've had this for maybe like a month and a half now and i still just kind of get my nose on it and that feeling of like this just smells amazing is still there you got the fresh aspect you've got uh green accords there's oak moss in this uh it does have a little bit of a pickly like smell to me but it actually doesn't bother me i just kind of notice that aspect uh kind of a musky feel to it fragrance just smells super classy which is something I've come to expect from pretty much all Hermes fragrances, and I just love the way this smells. So once again, from the house of Hermes, this is H24, the Eau de Parfum. All right, and the second one from the house of Hermes, it's Terre d'Hermes Eau Givray. Terre d'Hermes Eau Givray. So the story of when I first got my nose on this one, when it first came out, when I say everybody was basically just giving away samples of it, whether you bought something or not. So I must have had at least four, uh, like of the little two milliliter vial sample spray samples of this fragrance. So that's when I first tested it. I just bought it home and smelled it, blown away by it. I was like, man, this is good. My wife got her nose on. She was like, that is awesome. It's pretty much smells like grapefruit juice. I don't eat grapefruit. I actually don't like to eat it, but I do like the way it smells apparently because I certainly heads over heels over how this smells. And this is one of my kind of heaviest worn, uh, warm weather fragrances over the last year. And it's gonna continue to kind of be one I keep in the rotation because I think it's that good. But the smell alone, I don't get tired of it. It's relatively simple, but it's just very, very good. So that's why it made this list. Once again, from the House of Hermes, it's H20, I'm sorry, it's uh, Terre de Hermes Eau Givray. Moving on, coming from the House of Zherzhov, this is Alexandria II. Zherzhov's Alexandria II. I'm pretty sure I'm not alone on this one. The scent of this, I'll never get tired of. It just makes me happy. I've said that in other videos. I don't know what it is. It's just like the perfect combination of that apple and cinnamon and lavender mixing with the varieties of woods and ambery like sweetness that this fragrance has. It's just perfectly blended. Smells great. It does have utility, uh, but again, I'm not gonna go too much into that, but oh, man, I just never get tired of how good this fragrance smells every time i pick it up i'm just like yep it still is up there in terms of just smelling absolutely amazing and honestly that being enough for me as far as this fragrance is concerned so once again from the house of zirjoff this is alexandria 2. 
All right, next one's coming from the house of the mean London. This is carved oud. The mean London's carved oud. So if you know anything about this scent, this is basically their take on Tom Ford oud wood. However, the reason I chose to go with this one over oud wood is honestly, I, I don't wanna say I got bored of it, but the initial scent of it did not excite me quite as much the longer I had it, but I kind of got a rejuvenation of that of a love for that smell when I got this. It's basically oud wood, but adds some elements kind of like patchouli. A lot of patchouli is in this, so it adds that element that is not a in the original oud wood. And in particular, it turns the cypriol way up in this one compared to oud wood, because there is cypriol and oud wood as well, but this one, it's, it's beefed up quite a bit, and it's just a higher quality version beefed up one, like I said, a little bit more interesting, a little bit more movement with the fragrance, not quite as focused on the spices, more so focused on the woody and earthy elements, but it smells amazing and I still love just getting my nose on this. And I'm definitely very curious to see what Tom Ford does with the Oud Wood Parfum. Can't wait to get my nose on that. Curious to see how that one comes out. So once again, from the house of the mean London, this is Carved Oud. All right, next one's coming from the house of Nishane, and this is Hasavat. Nishane Hasavat. Um, I can't remember if I've ever said it on the channel, but this was actually a blind buy. I just thought of it like when I was thinking about when I first got my nose on it, and I never got my nose on this in a store. I never had the chance to or didn't know that I could. Uh, but yeah, this one was a blind buy and man, um, thankfully it worked out. This has to be, I would say my most successful blind buy cause it's the most worn fragrance that was a blind buy in my cabinet. And lucky for me, I'm a fan of Oak Moss. Uh, yeah, cause uh, <laughs> if I didn't like Oak Moss, I pretty much would have been screwed. But yes, I obviously this is one of my favorite fragrances. It's still my most worn fragrance to date, just based off how much juice is in here. It's about right there. No other fragrance is even close to that uh, worn down. And uh, yeah, the juiciness of the pineapple, the sharp citrus elements, which apparently I also really like. It's actually a little bit grapefruit-like as well. And uh, that jasmine and the uh, jasmine and patchouli in the heart of the fragrance. And then it, just that heavy oak moss. I just can't get enough of it. Still love the way this smells. And uh, it's one of the few bottles that I would absolutely buy, uh, buy a backup bottle if I needed to. And probably will end up because this one's halfway empty. So once again, from the house of Nishane, this is Hasavat. And the final fragrance for this list from the house of Nasamato, this is Black Afghano. Nasamato Black Afghano. Man, listen, this one's kind of similar to uh, Interlude in that it's smoky, it's resinous, it's a little bit woody. It's a little bit easier on the nose, not quite as brash as I find Interlude to be. This is a, a little bit smoother. It has some sweeter elements to it. Uh, it's definitely not as dark as Interlude is, but it's still heavy on the resins, heavy on the woods, heavy on the spices. So not, you know, more of a thing that uh, someone that's an enthusiast might enjoy over the average person. But I still remember when I first got my nose on it, uh, thought it was insanely great. I actually had them spray it on a sample card, brought the sample card home to, you know, just kind of reference later on. It literally took over the entire living room, so I didn't even have to pick it up and smell it, but I was just blown away at how good it smells, and I'm still blown away by it now, even though I find that this one also does not have as much utility, so I don't pick it up as often as I would like, even though, you know, that's kind of an excuse. I could wear it more, but I do consider utility with my fragrance choices, but uh, just the smell alone is enough for me when it comes to this fragrance. So once again, from the house of Nasamato, this is Black Afghano. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what some of your favorite fragrances are that if it was just based on smell alone, that's good enough for you. Looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say. Thank you again for watching all the way into the end. Please remember to be well and smell well, and I will see you in the next episode of The Fragrance Well. Have a good one.